And so the Justice Yange Kuo of the Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday voided the People's Democratic Party PDP's uh, uh, primary that held in February to produce a governorship candidate for the party the September 21 election. And so that created chaos on Thursday. Party faithful really worried about what this could portend for them as campaigns ought to be uh, everywhere at this point in time canvassing for electorate's vote. But well, what impact would this have on the PDP's drive towards maintaining the, 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 the rain? Uh, it's rain, I beg your pardon, in Edo State. We want to take a look at that today. We'll be joined by uh, uh, one of the um, members of the House, in fact, uh, the majority leader of Edo State House of Assembly will join us in just a moment. In the meantime, we also, okay, we hear that he's with us already on the show right now. Thank you so much, Honorable Gudala, for joining us on his hub today. Hello, good morning. Thank you so much. I can see that you ran away from the other I was going there. Did you see that I, I ran? Even in <laughs> why being put in syllables, still very easy to, to really bring out. But then we'll talk about that. We well, thank you indeed for being part of the program today. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning also with me. Are. All right. Also with me in the studios, uh, we have Victor Eta, who's uh, of course a in-house analyst on political matters. We well, thank you indeed for being part of the program today again, uh, Victor. It's always a great time to be here All with right. you, Tuesday <laughs> and Friday. Oh, it's always the best day. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your, uh, uh, let me say, neutral angle, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to hearing from Honorable uh, Gudala's angle as a stakeholder in this particular election. How did you receive the news on Thursday of the fact that the, the, the court had invalidated the primary? There are accusations that, in fact, there was no primary at all, that Asue Gudala was just handpicked by Governor Obaseki to be the one to fly the flag of PDP in the state uh, during the, the said primary. What actually is the truth? The uh, fact is that uh, what is uh, bandied around is not what anybody can uh, boastfully say is the position as taken by the court, except we see the certified copy of the judgment then we can categorically make statements on it because as a matter of fact, uh, we have had different versions of the judgment of the court. But what I'm sure of, because I'm knowledgeable about the suits uh, as at when it was filed, is that that suit was filed before the conduct of the primary election of 22nd of uh, February 2024. So there's no way the suit would have been asking for the invalidation of that primaries. And as a matter of fact, the suit did not ask for the invalidation of the primaries. So, and there's no court that has powers or jurisdiction to declare what is not asked for. The court can never give what they don't demand. So to that extent, I want to believe the latter uh, response, uh, the latter uh, position that was given by the council for the PDP that uh, the primaries that produced uh, Dr. Aswe Godalo was not invalidated. It was not in question. Neither was Aswe Godalo a party to the suit. And so his primaries was not invalidated. But be that as it may, if the court even did that, I would be surprised. Because when first I heard that the matter was taken. All right. I think you've muted your mic there. We'll try to see how we can get your when audio. I heard that the matter was taken to the uh, court of Justice Equo. I had this fall bounding because I, myself, I contested the election in these states. And uh, there was a suit that was filed against us maliciously. And the same uh, Equo declared that we were not candidate of the PDP. But he was trounced in the court of appeal and at the Supreme Court. And uh, I also understand, but perhaps the reason he hesitated from declaring that Aswe Godalo is not the candidate of the party, he would have done that knowing his notoriety. But I understand years ago, he was given a warning that all his judgments have been obtained in the upper court. And they are, he, he happened to be the judge that had the highest number of petitions against him. And that he will never, he has been banned for two years from even applying to the court of appeal. So that is why perhaps he restrained in making that pronouncement. So I was not shocked. I was not surprised. I only knew that on appeal, the matter would be set aside because there's no court that has jurisdiction 
to determine a pre-election matter, except it is brought within the conference of Section 84, sub 14, which says that it must be an aspirant in an election. So a delegate, as they said they were, or an aspiring delegate, does not have a right. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it is not justiciable. It's a pre-election matter. It's an intraparty matter. It's not a case that can be even con uh, contemplated in any court. Talk more of a court giving judgment in support or against. And uh, what a court does in that situation is to decline jurisdiction. And it was the same Justice Echo in the case of Injuri and Inogama that gave the judgment uh, also for the uh, for the disgruntled uh, people who took the issue of delegates to court then. And the Supreme Court warned that except it is an aspirant, nobody can bring a matter concerning pre-election cases to court. The same Justice Echo is not uh, assuming jurisdiction in the matter that, the, that borders on uh, delegates. It is judicial impertinence. But again, what do one do? He is still a judge of the High Court, Federal High Court. Then uh, whatever he gives stands until it is obtained. But this surely, if that is what he decided, must be obtained. In just a moment, Honorable Igadala, let, let's talk about the immediate impact that this verdict has on your party. You've told us now that your party is going to appeal the verdict, and then you've you're trying to you've cited instances where you felt that the court didn't even have the right to attend to that particular case. But that uh, should be let into the hands of those uh, authorities, those in the judiciary, to decide. Within the, the, the party, what is the mood like? Uh, uh, yesterday, initially when we heard about the news in the afternoon, early afternoon, there was a, 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 point, a, a sort of panic. Uh, there were several calls coming to me, uh, people trying to know what is happening, uh, knowing that uh, I have knowledge in that area of uh, legal practice. Uh, I gave my insight personally from my point of view. Until I got information from our lawyers who told us that what was uh, being bandied was not exactly what happened uh, in court. And uh, before you knew it, before the evening of yesterday, there was an upsurge in the uh, campaign for Aswea Godalo, uh, both on the social media and on ground here in Benin City. It has actually popularized him more. It has uh, positioned him properly as a, a victim of the uh, Kaba, those that does not want uh, good for uh, dope people, and you see in some of the videos circulated, they were all gathered in one place. And they brought to mind the, what happened in uh, Israel, when Israel wanted to leave Egypt. All the wicked people in Egypt had to be gathered so that they would perish in the Red Sea. So that now that they are all on one side, we are sure that uh, a victory for the people of a two state, victory for progress, victory for prosperity is now setting. Our people are resolute, they are firm, Nobody is disturbed any longer. The campaign has taken an upsurge. This morning, as I was coming, people were already using uh, campaign vehicles to start talking from one place to the other, reassuring the people that their Aswe Godalo is on the ballot and is there to win. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Igadala. I mean, I mean, it's Igodalo and Igodala. There, there, is, there seems to be like a line there, you know. We, we, we come back to that in just a moment. As a neutral person who has interest in everything that happens politically in the country, what do you see playing out in Edo State? Well, w what I see is that, uh, you know, when politicians, uh, you know, you, you, you sit down, and you tell or make a situation, yet you expect a different mm -hmm. outcome. Uh, let me give it to the uh, the majority leader, leader of the uh, Edo State House of Assembly. He's done a good job for his state. He's done a good job for his party. The way he has answered all your well-articulated questions is mind-blowing. Um, but the facts remain the facts. Is that um, he said that uh, the, the primaries has been invalidated by a court. Whether you question the uh, the jurisdiction of uh, the, the the court, it is up to is a legal argument, and uh, you cannot use a political argument over a legal argument. You have to state the facts. Uh, the 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 argument against the PDP is that there's what is called authentic delegate list, and that this list favored 
the 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 ex one deputy governor of a do state um a shaibu and that uh, the governor uh, came up with uh, you know political appointees and a uh, party loyalists who were not even registered as delegates in that election in that primary election and they went to the stadium and then did a jamboree and then they produced igadalo uh, but the fact remains the fact uh, but we must be careful. We must advise politicians not to play down an institution just to, you know, uh, promote an individual. When you, when you, when you discredit a court judgment, you discredit a judge. Uh, you are then saying that Nigerians should not have faith and hope in the judiciary, and that doesn't go well. It doesn't go well indeed. But I must say for the PDP. Uh, they are very lucky to have uh, to have the gentleman who is uh, a guest on this program today. He's done a good job for them. But for me, the fact remains the fact that uh, uh, PDP, one way or the other, might not be on the ballot. Okay. Uh, come 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 uh, um, 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 September, uh, September 2021. So that is the fact. I am not going to. Yeah, I was going to say good morning. Okay. All right. This is the view of a lot of Nigerians who feel that they're looking at what uh, PDP will do in the next few days, maybe today. They know that you don't have weeks to be able to push for an appeal against this. They feel that there were so many issues that didn't go right during the last primary that your party conducted in Edo State. And this could be just one of the ghosts that may come after your party if you don't do the needful ahead of the 21st September election. Okay, let me say, uh, because I was uh, careful with time not to go into the issue of what uh, the conduct of the primary itself was. As a matter of fact, uh, the, I, see I'm, I, I see I'm very careful not to uh, talk too much about the content of the uh, judgment that I have not seen. This is because from experience, I know how much some lawyers go in uh, giving out information that are not true and that are not the content of a judgment. And uh, disturbingly, our lawyers yesterday also said that what uh, one uh, uh, by Mr. Dazer Manta reported to the media is not the truth. So by 12 o'clock today, I'm sure, as I was promised, we'll have a, a copy of the judgment and we'll be able to talk to the judgment. But assuming, assuming the court said that the delegate list was not right, I'm saying it without any form of equivocation, that the court does not have power to say whether a delegate list is right or not. It's an intra-party matter. And uh, I'm, I'm a lawyer of uh, a, a very long time standing, and I've done electoral cases to the Supreme Court severally. And I'm saying this responsibly, and I don't want to uh, undermine the institution because I cannot undermine an institution that I belong to, that Justice Echo has shown over time that he's an unreliable judge and that judgment he has given against the two people. It is not one, it's not two. I don't even know how our cases get to his court all the time. More than six cases that he has given judgment against us, on appeal they are all upturned and he is usually reprimanded. So I'm sure this will also happen if that is the judgment he gave. Then concerning the primaries proper, because I was involved, eh, the primaries was conducted by the National uh, uh, Executive Council of the PDP, and that is the uh, congresses in the various wards. We are conducted and the, uh, the results were collated and it was announced. I said this is the most transparent primary election that I have seen. Why? Because it is the first time the list of delegates were published about two days before the conduct of election. Usually, delegate lists are hidden so that the other person will not be able to reach out to the delegates. But in this case, the PDP published the delegate list publicly, and it was published on the vanguard of 20th of uh, uh, February 2024. That list of the party publishing is uh, gives that uh, a, a legal imprimatur to the process. So it is not a function of uh, perhaps people we are just imported as was being insinuated by my friend uh, uh, the uh, analyst. That was not the case, sir. The case is that 
Tamaris, uh, the uh, Congress we have conducted in Edo State here, the people who won had their name published in national newspapers. And this is uh, eventually the, that same list that was published in national newspaper was used to conduct election. There was no holder of office on the list. The list is clear, it is outside. If you get the paper on the 20th of February, go and look at it. Uh, the names are all listed there. Two days yeah. before the conduct of the election. It is unprecedented. It all right. Was very transparent and it was very open. That a certain uh, Justice Ian Epo uh, is doing the somersault that he used to do. Don't all all right, Honorable uh, Igadala, I was actually coming there. First and foremost, uh, we do not allow that we go on personal attacks on our shows. This is a platform for everyone to talk, but we have to use our words responsibly so that we don't offend others whilst they're trying to make the right submissions on the program. That's one. Two, uh, it's good that you're directing it back to the guests in the house with the information that he has, which also is in the open uh, domain. Everybody has it that there was an accusation that the list used to conduct that election was not the authentic list. But you've come to say that, look, you have the valid list. Would your party be willing to publish it? Yeah, it is published. It's on the vanguard of 20th of February 2024. If you get that, 20th of February 2024, all the names of the delegates that participated in the uh, primaries uh, of uh, those states of this election was published two days to that uh, election. Then talking that, about... That uh, list. I did not name uh, uh, to what the NJC said. But the you people, the people, NGC, some of your party so faithful, Honorable Igadala, are saying that that list was tailored. That it was not the authentic list. That was a list that was made possible by the governor of your state so that his own interests were protected during the primary. For instance, gave instances of people whose names when, could not even have been there because there were others who were faithful of the party who some would say on the other side seem to be loyal to the former deputy governor of the state and some other uh, big wigs in your state. How, how do you respond to that? Yes, quickly, uh, my response is that the governor have no, uh, have no business that leads to the emergence of Delhi. It's not his business. He doesn't lie with him. He does not to do with it. It is the national organ of the party that has the power to do, and the national organ of the party, for that uh, responsibility, selected some persons. It was a, a five-man committee to come to Edo State, the conduct of the Congress. So they got to Edo, stationed at the state secretariat, and mobilized uh, uh, people who, in line with the normal practice in Nigeria, eh, uh, shows a status that went to the various uh, wards, the 192 wards in the state. And they brought uh, the result back to that uh, uh, to that uh, committee that was set up by the national. It is from that list that was generated, 192 word of uh, those state that that publication of uh, 20th of uh, uh, February 2024 was done not only in Vanguard in some other newspapers. So what I'm saying, sir, is that who conducted the primaries for the deputy governor in the congresses? For the former deputy governor, that is the question that we should be asking. So, you said that the list, the delegate list uh, that was uh, published, was not the authentic one, and that you have an authentic delegate list. Please help us ask him who conducted the congress for him, because it's only the national organ of the party that has the virus to conduct the congress of the party, and they so did and produced the list. That produced Dr. Aswe Godalo. Don't forget that this uh, deputy governor also organized his own uh, uh, in, in quotes because he, uh, the, that's what the media was calling it then uh, a parallel primary. So, with what list did he not conduct that is primary parallel primary? And who conducted it for him? So, I think uh, we should 
understand what is uh, playing. It's a, a spoiler's game. Like that matter that happened in the Bible, where the woman who, had, who was not the owner of the child said you can divide it into two, so that one person will take one part, the other one will take the other part. And the real owner of the child said, no, please don't divide it. When the child grows up, we will know who the uh, mother is. Okay. So the deputy, uh, the former deputy governor is uh, looking for every way to ensure that the PDP candidate as well that is not the, on the ballot. You, 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 but you are in the process words. is saying that the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the benefits of this show, let's break it down so that I can also talk to so that people can get to this. Victor, I see very much in the studios and I'm sure you want to respond. Are you in a way accusing the former deputy governor of orchestrating what the verdict that we got on Thursday. Is that your position? It is what he celebrated on social media. If you see his viral celebration, it is obvious that it was orchestrated by him. And the uh, purported litigants uh, were sponsored by him. Uh, he was still in the party before he was expelled. As a matter of fact, it was before the conduct of the primaries that this soup was fed by him. And we knew that he used those uh, uh, names, those people to file it, uh, just for the purpose of uh, causing this kind of disaffection uh, if okay. he doesn't uh, win in the primaries. All right. Thank you. Uh, so you know, okay. You, 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 you cleared on that uh, because we have someone that also has to speak for general generality of the people those let me say neutral people but who are paying attention to the election upcoming election in edo state or even generally edo politics so you've heard honorable gadala speaking right now accusing that's what it, it is at the moment the former deputy governor of orchestrating the verdict that we got uh, against the people's democratic party's candidates in uh, you know, the Edo election come uh, uh, September 21. He says, look, all of these were put together by his cronies. And uh, it is what it is. Is it actually what it is? What do you see? Well, the, <coughs> the thing is that uh, politicians, they, uh, you know, when politicians go on a spree of speaking with both, from both sides of the mouth, it becomes an issue. Um, I, I don't know when um, the former deputy governor became a stranger to Edo politics. We know how grounded this guy is in Edo State, and uh, we know the role he's played, he played in making sure that the governor secured the second term and all of that. And yet, this is uh, someone that uh, has to be jettisoned and all of that. But the point is, a name was published. Can we just suppose that name with the name of the people that attended, that, that voted in that primaries? Let us, they keep, political parties are good with keeping uh, records. The, you sign attendance list when you are attending any political uh, uh, meetings and all of that. So let us look at the list. The people that are signing into the stadium, are they the same names that was published on Vanguard and other newspapers as uh, claims by the PDP? The issue is politicians, when it doesn't go that well with them, they, they cry foul when it doesn't go that well with them they do everything they can to resist whatsoever uh that that that, 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 that was done you know it's uh, it's uh, the pdp failed to fix their house the apc also failed to fix their own house but the apc did a better job than the pdp that is the bone of contention both parties fell in fixing their house and at the end of the day, this might go against PDP, even go against APC, and the party that may even come in between could be Labour Party. You have to fix your eyes when you're approaching any election. As, as it stands now, INEC will work with whatsoever the court has said. If PDP are going to appeal, they should do that as soon as possible. But the challenge lies. The facts against the PDP is quite enormous. And at the end of the day, the PDP will ask, where did we get this wrong? Where did we go wrong with preparing ourselves for this election? Because in, a, in, 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 in those states, yes, you say that the deputy, former deputy governor was the person orchestrating this. But this is a Mayubu stripping of all the powers. You even went to collect cars. So where does they have the resources? And these are deputy governors that everybody knows in Nigeria. These are tea parties 
people, deputy governors all over the country. How now it is a convenience you are saying that is the deputy governor that sponsored this and sponsored that. Was he the one that instituted the, instituted the case against the PDP? No, he wasn't the one. So but he's saying now, I yes. mean, Honorable Igadala is yes. saying that he also knows Edu politics, and yes. that's why he's a majority leader as we speak of right course. at the moment. He's saying that the people whose names are listed as plaintiffs are, you know, the, the, the uh, let me Cronies say, of the former of the former deputy, deputy governor. governor. And so it would seem to, to us, as he said right now, that uh, the former deputy governor does not care, just according to him, and, died, and he cited the instance of the story in the Bible where the woman who didn't own the child didn't mind, didn't mind, didn't mind if King Solomon killed the child and shed the dead baby to the two women who were laying claims to it. You know, politicians know the Bible very well, but to keep what the Bible says is a problem, but it's fine. And uh, the thing is that PDP, like I said earlier, got it all wrong the way they handled so you cannot even blame the the, the former child you can't blame him because the way he was kicked out with all the contributions all the things he did for the party all of a sudden is somebody that needs to be thrown away you don't throw a child with the bath water you do not you okay. must think because at the end of the day you could use that same water for any other purpose you do not throw the child with the bath water and train the child with the bath water it is that is what has resulted into the fiasco all right some form of fiasco that the pdp finds themselves in a those state thank you uh, so honorable Gadala, we have to wrap it up in the next two or three minutes uh in all of this you've mentioned that your party intends to appeal this verdict uh that was uh, handed out on thursday what has your party done so far has it actually gone ahead to file the suit and in what on what grounds do you think this could be upturned okay uh, first let me quickly correct an impression correcting the impression means that i'm stating uh, my friend mr ita that it was the names that was published that voted at the ugly stadium that day the names that is bandied is in uh, uh, as the authentic list uh, over which the matter was discussed at the court of uh, at the uh, justice Eco's court uh, they are they were not on the vanguard newspaper they were names that were put together by the former deputy governor uh, they, they did not emanate from the congress conducted by the national executive committee they were uh, names that he concocted himself just like he also declared himself the winner of the primaries, a primary he did elsewhere, whereas the main primary was done at Obey Stadium. I meant you, as I said before, this suit was filed before the conduct of the primaries. That said, uh, concerning our peace, I have uh, stated earlier that we have not seen a copy, the certified true copy of that judgment. We are expecting it to come out before the end of today, and when that is done, uh, the we will not take a decision whether to appeal it or not, uh, depending on where it affects the candidacy of our uh, flag bearer, Dr. Aswe Rudal. All or right, not. thank they you so good. much. Uh, talk we, we have to go now at the moment. Trust us, we'll bring you on here and even on our news bulletins as well as other parties that are involved so that we can get all sides to it and get it all balanced. We'll be speaking with the majority leader, Edo State House of Assembly, Honorable Ugadala. Thank you indeed for being part of the program.